Hi guys, I'm Joe Esposito. Uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. How many listen on radio? That's what I look like. <laughs> Bummer, huh? <laughs> right there, tall, good looking Neil Bortz or something. <laughs> so, so thanks for being here, I really appreciate being here. And uh, you listen to me on the radio, you kind of know my approach, right? My approach is very no nonsense, get in there and fix it. So we're going to talk about today about cleaning out the body, spring cleaning the body. We're working on the air conditioner and I can't find the key for the air conditioner lock. So just so you know, we didn't forget about you. So. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to talk about today is cleaning out the body. This is important because whenever you eat something, anything, your body does a few things with it. It either stores it, passes it out, okay, or utilizes it. That's it. So anything you ever eat, everything you ever, every time you breathe, you drink something, it stores it, passes it out, utilizes it. That's the whole game. So what we want to do is utilize the best we can, only store it if we're going to need it for, for the future, and then pass out everything else. Because every, every day, no matter how good your diet is, no matter how perfect your nervous system is, your body is producing waste products constantly. I mean, if you, you're fasting, you're producing waste products. Those waste products have to come out. They come out through several different ways. Your skin, your breath, your urine, your feces, and women get an extra bonus to get the menstrual cycle. And that's one of the reasons we believe women may live longer than men, because they have more ways to get rid of junk. Pretty cool. And so women can be low in iron, off on a tangent, first tangent, here it is, okay? <laughs> women can be low in iron because they have a menstrual cycle. Men, be careful. One of the problems we have is we often have too much iron. And if we have too much iron, the, we start to oxidize in our blood vessels. We essentially start to rust. And so one of the things that happens with men is we don't let blood, and so we have to do something about that. And a cool little thing you can do to clean out extra, uh, extra iron in your body is to donate blood. It's a neat little trick. I donate it as often as I can. And you donate the blood, don't eat the cookies. Okay, eat the cookies afterwards, don't do that. But they were, to donate blood is great. After I donate blood, I always feel great. I don't know what it is, but my body just start, it starts making new blood cells. So just be careful, men, uh, if you have too much iron, and they'll test your iron when you donate blood too, um, just to make sure you don't have too much, because that could lead to heart disease. Interesting, isn't it? That's why most men's supplements, if you look at really high quality men's supplements, they don't contain iron. And now you know what? How about that? Pretty easy. Okay? So, you absorb it, you pass it out, you store it. That's pretty much the game. So, you, you, eat, you put something in your body. <coughs> Excuse me, I was around somebody with perfume today. And they're like, it's <laughs> So, no perfume. Become his patient, no perfume. Okay? So, um, you put food in your body, your body it goes down your, your throat into your stomach, and your stomach's main job is to break proteins into something called amino acids. Now you chew your food, yes? I hope. Okay, when you chew your food, you have spit. There's a fancy word for that, it's called salivary amylase. Amylase breaks down carbohydrates, stomach acids break down proteins. Then your gallbladder has something that it stores called bile, and bile breaks down fat. So that's pretty much your digestive system. Now, there is a little bonus here that nature has put together for us. You eat something, you chew it, goes into your stomach, the acids break the proteins into amino acids. The acid in your stomach is very strong. If I were to cut my stomach open right now and there was a carpet here and I dumped the contents onto the carpet, it would burn a hole in the carpet. That's how strong my stomach acid is. So that's why if you have something like acid reflux, it's very dangerous because that acid is burning your throat and can lead to things like throat cancer. Not fun. So the stomach breaks the proteins in, down, and then this acid has to go into your small intestine. There's a problem. Your small intestine is alkaline. It's not acid, it's the exact opposite of acid. So now we've got a pickle. If that stomach acid isn't neutralized when it gets into the small intestine, it burns a hole in the intestine, and we call that what? An ulcer. Oh, called the wadnal ulcer. Stomach ulcer is when you get bacteria in your stomach. There's a bacteria called Heliobacteria. And when a bacteria gets into your stomach, it can eat a hole in your stomach, and that's a stomach ulcer. So you would think to yourself, well, gosh, if I have an ulcer in my stomach, I probably need to neutralize some of that acid, right? The only way the bacteria can live is in a low acid environment. So if you're getting stomach ulcers, it's that you have too little acid, not too much acid. And so you say, well, I'll drink milk, it'll neutralize my stomach, it'll coat my stomach. Not a good idea. You want to increase the stomach acid, kill off the bacteria, then the ulcer should heal. So stomach acid, call it uh, small intestine alkaline. How do we switch? 
from this strong acid that'll burn a hole in a carpet to something that has to be alkaline, your pancreas. You think your pancreas to produce what? What do you think your pancreas makes? Insulin. insulin, right? We all know that, insulin, right? Insulin. That's only one thing your pancreas makes. Your pancreas also makes amylase, protease, and lipase. These are enzymes to break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So here's my stomach, churning up that food I just had, that great Oreo rice that Lori made for me. I'm gonna dump it into my small intestine. Immediately my pancreas, over here, squirts digestive enzymes into my small intestine, but it also squirts, essentially, baking soda. And that neutralizes the acid so I don't burn a hole in my small intestine. It's pretty cool. So this is why it's so important to eat well. One of the many reasons it's important to eat well. Because if you're not breaking down your food properly, if you're eating a lot of cooked foods, if you're not chewing your food, if your stomach acid isn't high enough, your pancreas has to kick in and try to help. And eventually your pancreas will burn out. And if the pancreas burns out, guess what? Now you stand, can't produce that thing you knew about, what was it? Insulin. Insulin. And now we can develop diabetes. Ah. <coughs> what you need about this is whenever an organ isn't working in your body, your body makes it bigger. So when I look at patients that eat a, a lot of cooked food, if, you know, when I, I remember when I, when I was in school, we did dissection, where patients don't pay their bills, that's another way we... <laughs> I am Italian. So, when we did dissection, if somebody had this huge pancreas, they either were eating a lot of cooked foods, they didn't have enough enzymes in their diet, their stomach acid was too low, and so the pancreas actually gets bigger to make more enzymes. Eventually, it can't get any bigger and it burns out. If your heart isn't working, it gets bigger. So that's why it's important if I look at an x-ray and I see somebody has very large organs, I know there's probably a nutritional component involved. That's kind of neat. It's not just bones I look at on my x-rays, I also look at the patient's organs. So that's kind of digestion in a nutshell. Then your small intestine has a bunch of bacteria in it. I have a little bit more on digestion. Your, your small intestine is loaded with bacteria. 70% of your immune system is in your small intestine. So you start eating a lot of cooked foods, that food goes into your small intestine and it rots. And it starts killing off the good bacteria. You take antibiotics. I'm not against antibiotics. I'm against unnecessary use of antibiotics. And what's another source of antibiotics aside from, uh, like, from medicine? Garlic. Commercial meats and dairy products. Commercial meats and dairy products, they feed them antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers. And every time you eat commercial meats or dairy products, or eggs, you're getting these small amounts of antibiotics. So what happens now is, the bacteria start to get used to these small amounts of antibiotics, and they mutate, and they morph. And now we create these superbugs, things like MRSA, that aren't responding to traditional medicines. Now we've got a problem. You get a MRSA infection, there's not a lot of drugs we can use on it. What do we do? So what's really neat is a lot of doctors now and a lot of research companies are going back to the old ways. Garlic, okay? Olive leaf extract, things like this they're using now is trying to fight off these, uh, these bacterial infections that aren't responding to traditional medications. I'm not against medication. I want you to only use it when you need it, okay? So if you're eating a lot of these cooked foods because the cooked foods don't have enzymes in them and that puts more strain on a pancreas, the pancreas has to make more enzymes, and you're killing off the bacteria, Another problem occurs. If you kill off the bacteria, there's something that isn't killed off by antibiotics. It's called yeast. And so now the yeast starts to overgrow in your colon. And there's not a lot of bacteria fighting with it. And the yeast goes, I'm bored. I want to go on vacation. So it burrows a hole in your colon, gets into the blood system, and starts circulating through your blood. Now you have what's called a systemic yeast infection. And that's when it comes out in other areas. Women, vaginal infections, athlete's foot, jock itch, thrush. These are signs that there's an internal yeast infection, and we can treat it topically, but the problem is inside, not outside. Following? So when I see that with my patients, I need to really revamp their diets, and then try to build up the good bacteria in their colon and kill off the yeast. And then your food, <coughs> excuse me, food's in your small intestine, right here's a little valve called the ileocecal valve. The valve opens, the food passes from the small intestine into the large intestine, the valve closes, water is absorbed in your large intestine, it goes up, across, down, and out. That's digestion in the four minutes. Okay, so, so why did I go through all that? We're talking about spring cleaning. That has to work. 
If that doesn't work, now the toxins build up in your body. Another issue, your pancreas, uh, your, your gallbladder stores bile. Bile breaks down what, do you remember? Fat. Fat, very good. What happens is what, waste products in your, in your liver are broken down to create bile and then it's passed out. If your bowels aren't moving properly, those waste products get reabsorbed back into your body. Cholesterol can get reabsorbed back into your body. Hormones can get reabsorbed back into your body. So it's vital that the bowels are working so that you don't reabsorb your own toxins, much less the outside toxins. Bowels should move how often? Normal. Three days. What? Four to six times? An hour? No. <laughs> Three times a day. What is it? Three times a day. Two to three times a day, exactly. Yes, that's normal. Not a week. Not a month. Okay? Two to three times a day. Food in should mean food out. Anybody have a baby ever? If it was a baby? It's not a trick question. The answer is yes. Okay. Babies eat, and you're amazed. How did that little baby make that much diaper? Because that's a normal digestive system. Food in, food out. Food in, food out. And what happens is we get older, we start eating bad foods, our digestive system becomes weak, we don't have time to go to the bathroom, uh, we're in a public place, and then what happens is those toxins can build up in the mouth. So when patients come to my office, I always check their nervous system because the nerves control everything. Then I always check their digestive system. Because I want to make sure food in and toxins are coming out, and then I look at their diet. And that's a healthcare plan. What you have to buy is an insurance plan. That's not a healthcare plan. That's an insurance plan. This is a healthcare plan, a step-by-step -step protocol to help get you better, right? And that's what patients want. When they come to my office, they say, Doc, I, I want a healthcare plan. I already have insurance, I want a healthcare plan. And what do we call it? Not Obamacare, we call it what? Joe Bob. Joe Bob care. there you go, right? Because <laughs> I really do want to help you get well. So, you got the digestive system down. It's got to be working properly. What controls the digestive system? The nervous system. Your brain sits up here, right? Most cases? <laughs> and the brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. So there's a nerve that goes to your colon, your liver, your spleen, your thyroid, your kidneys, your gallbladder. Everything has to be connected to the spine. The brain and the nervous system have to tell you what to do. Two things can interfere with the messages, chemical or physical. Chemical is what? Drugs, food, alcohol, environmental toxins. So the food you eat is what we're talking about tonight and what I talk about on the show all the time and in my books and in my lectures. The food you eat is the chemistry. You eat food, your digestive system works properly, absorbs the nutrients, it feeds the nervous system. The nervous system now controls the digestive system. So you have to have both. You can't have one or the other. And this is where a lot of people fall short in their healthcare protocols. People will say, Dr. Joe, did you read this book on nutrition or eating the way you're supposed to eat for whatever, your, your family ancestry, whatever. And I say, yes, I have, but they're missing a component. The component that's missing is the nervous system, because the nervous system controls the digestive system, so you can absorb the nutrients, regardless of the diet. Make sense? So that's the missing link. The missing link is you have to have the nervous system working. Now, what could damage the nervous system, chemical or physical? When I say physical, car accidents, Sports injuries, how about sitting all day? I did a show not too long ago. The new thing, what's worse than smoking? Sitting. Sitting. Isn't that crazy? Sitting is now more dangerous to your health than smoking. Wow. So when you do the studies, your body is designed to move. So what happens is, as we talk about cleansing the body, I'm going to talk about something you've never heard of before. It's called the sacro-occipital pump. Anybody hear that? You have? Let's listen to my lectures. Okay. <laughs> your heart beats and pumps blood. You have something called the lymphatic system. That's part of your cleansing system. Lymphatic system is filters. You have bacteria, viruses, germs. They go through the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes filter them out, and then it gets flushed out through your digestive system. You ever get swollen glands when you're sick? Those are lymph nodes. Okay, so those are swollen lymph. So the only way the lymph glands work is by movement. You have to move to contract the muscles to pump the lymph glands. There's no heart to pump them. You have to be moving. The muscles pump. And now something you've never heard of before, most doctors haven't either, called the sacro-occipital pump. Sacrum is your tailbone here. Your occiput is your bone up here. Every time you breathe, you do this. Pumping something called cerebrospinal fluid up your spinal cord into your brain, sending nourishment up into the brain and spinal cord. 
It's the circulatory system of the nervous system. Ah. And what makes that work? Movement. So if you're sitting all day, you're locking up the sacro occipital pump, you're not pumping nutrients up to the brain, the brain controls everything. So you have to have all three components. Nervous system, digestive system, and nutrition, or else you don't have a health care plan. And the sacro occipital pump comes from motion. Now those of you who have been in my office, you know every table we have, you lay on the table on your belly, and the bottom drops down, and it stretches you out. Well, I always did that because I knew it pumped the cerebrospinal fluid. Just last week, I saw a study out that said Alzheimer's disease, the proteins that build up in the brain in Alzheimer's disease can be flushed out through the sacro occipital pump. So I didn't realize what I was doing for the patients. I was actually flushing out their brain from toxic poisons. Pretty neat stuff. There's another thing that works for that, and that's horseback riding. If you ever saw uh, mentally challenged children, many times they'll put them on horses and they walk them. And it's, oh, it's amazing. The kids do so much better when they're on the horses. You know what it's doing? It's pumping that sacro occipital pump. Pretty cool. They don't know why. So I've spoken to people that do that therapy, and I've spoken, and they said, well, we just think it's being around the horses, it's being outside. No, you're pumping your, your cerebral spine. I never knew that. So you want to flush toxins out of the system, not just through the bowels, the lymphatic system and the sacro-occipital system. That flushes out cerebral spinal fluid toxins. So I want your body functioning the best it can. I want you absorbing good nutrients, getting the brain working properly, and flushing out the waste products. And so we can do that by mobilizing the body. So that's why when it comes to cleansing, you can do the colon, but you also have to do the body. Now, best type of exercise. We used to, right, jogging. Well, remember aerobics? Aerobics was great for a while. Okay, then it was Pilates, then it was jogging, okay? The way the body works best is bursts. Interval bursts, high intensity interval training, we call it, H-I-I-T, HIT training. And what you do is, you, run, you go as fast as you can for about 20 to 30 seconds. Now, it doesn't matter what that is. You can lift weights for 20 to 30 seconds. You can run for 20 to 30 seconds. You can be on your elliptical, 20 to 30 seconds. As fast as you can until you feel the point like you're just exhausted. Slow down or stop for a minute and a half. Burst again for 20 to 30 seconds. Do that eight times. It's the only exercise we've ever found that increases your human growth hormone. And as a child, we have lots of human growth hormone. We don't have to exercise. We're young and healthy and our skin is vibrant and we have muscles. And then we get older and that human growth hormone drops dramatically. So what do we need to do? Get that HGH up again. And we can do that by the high intensity interval training. Now your high intensity interval training might be different than his, that would be different from yours. If there is no way to do it, you just have to go as hard as you can. And if this is as hard as you can go for 20 or 30 seconds, great. You're doing it. And you'll be amazed, it burns fat. It's really one of the few exercises that actually burns fat. It increases the human growth hormone. And as you're moving, you're pumping the lymphatics and the sacro occipital pump. And now, your body is healing. Up to this point, it can't. So other things we can do, let's go back to food again. I'm sorry, I know that obviously somebody locked us out here for the, for the air conditioner or something. Do I open a door, Lori? Would that help, maybe? I don't know. So we gotta get the food digested properly. And I mentioned cooked food earlier, and I kinda left it at that. I did that for a reason. You wanna eat about 60% of your diet raw. So that will be raw fruits, raw vegetables. Because what happens is, as soon as you cook something above 110 degrees, you destroy something called the enzymes. Remember enzymes? Pancreas makes them, right? Your mouth makes them. Enzymes actually, are like Pac-Man, they dissolve and break things down. And so you want to get those enzyme levels up. Raw food has enzymes in it. As soon as you cook anything above 110 degrees, enzymes are destroyed. A good example is this. Take a baby cow. Give it mother's milk right out of the udder. Cow does fine. Take that milk and pasteurize it. Now we heat it up to very high temperatures when we pasteurize things, right? Feed it back to the baby cow. The cow will die in about 30 days. Starve to death. They can't digest its own mother's milk. Why? Because it's been passionate. It's been heated. So when you eat food, you want to do raw food. So when Laurie gave you the master cleanse today, the master cleanse is great because I'm going to talk about how that cleanses the body. But the master cleanse has lemon in it, and lemon is great for alkalizing the system. Because if we're too acidic, we set up a perfect environment for cancer, osteoporosis, 
brain malfunctions, neurological malfunctions. So you want to alkalize the system. But lemon is kind of interesting. Even though it's an acid when you eat it, it becomes an alkaline in your digestive system. What else does that? Apple cider vinegar. Raw organic apple cider vinegar alkalizes the system. Regular vinegar doesn't. Raw organic does. So it's wonderful for alkalizing the system. The hot pepper that you put in the master cleanse is a vasodilator. Vaso means vessel, dilate means to open. It opens up your blood vessels and increases circulation throughout your whole body. Remember we said the blood system is a way to flush out waste products? So now you're increasing your blood's ability to detoxify. And then we put grade B maple syrup in there. I don't want grade B, I want grade A, right? Grade A is better? Uh-uh. Why is grade B better, you know? Grade, not, not it, no, no, it's taken at the end of the season. There's more minerals in the grade B maple syrup than there is in the grade A. It's been around longer, like us old folks. <laughs> so what's really neat about it is it, it, it replaces the vitamins and minerals that you need, so when you are fasting, your body still has the nutrients coming in. And then, of course, the water is great to flush out the system and help the bowels move and the kidneys move. So that's why the Master Cleanse is so effective. Now, like Lori said, if you do this, you do this. That's it. And you can do it for day one, you're hungry. Day two, you're hungry. Day three, you're hungry. After day three, your hunger goes away. Now, one of the challenges I have when I put a patient on a Master Cleanse is I have to remind them to eat again. And they're like, Doc, I have so much energy. I feel great. I've never felt this good. I don't want to start eating again. No, you really need to, okay? Because the number one consumer of energy we have as humans is romance. The number two consumer of energy is digestion. You take out the digestive component, because you're digesting all day, every day. You take out that component, you have so much energy. And that's why when you eat bad foods, you're exhausted. There's a lecture I do in February, it's the Food Romance Connection. And the stupidest thing you can do on a Valentine's Day date is to have steak and lobster and wine and cheesecake and bread and butter because it it's so exhausting. And it's a real ch simple challenge. Notice how you feel after you eat a salad for lunch. Notice how you feel that afternoon. And then notice how you feel after you eat pizza. It's real simple. I mean, we could really change the economy of the world if people would stop eating what they eat for lunch. Any teachers in here? When is the grades better, morning or afternoon? Morning. Morning. 100%, right? What changed between morning and afternoon? Lunch. There it was. <laughs> See how easy that was? So you stop eating the junk that they feed you in the cafeteria, your body works normally. I pack my lunch, I would say, almost every day. It's quicker. It's easier. It's cheaper. I know what I'm getting. I don't have to think. Because how many people at lunch go an hour before lunch? Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? Where do you want to go? What do you? I don't know. I got a coupon. You want to go to coupon? <laughs> How much productivity is wasted? <laughs> Organic salad, chop it up. Extra virgin olive oil, apple cider vinegar. Sometimes I get crazy. I add some ginger to it. <laughs> Cayenne pepper, oregano, whatever you feel like. There's your salad. Throw some chickpeas in there if you want to feel full with it. Really get crazy. Add some gravy, maple syrup. Make it a little sweeter. And you have to have a salad every day. And I don't care what's in the salad. Could be lettuce, could be carrots, celery, peppers, cucumbers, broccoli, I don't care what it is, but you have to have a raw salad every day. And in fact, I hope that you have something raw at every meal. Because when you eat something raw at every meal, it has what in it? Enzymes. Enzymes, which takes the stress off your digestive system and so that you're able to deal with life stress. It's easier to digest too. And it, you don't get tired. You eat what I just said for lunch, you're not tired. You go out and have cheesesteak, you're exhausted. And so now productivity, <coughs> excuse me, from morning to afternoon drops dramatically because of what people eat. And when people change their diet, they say, Doc, something crazy happened. I got home the other night and I wasn't tired. I didn't want to go to sleep. I went out, I went for a walk, I did some gardening, I spent some time with my significant other, my kids, I played, I cleaned the house, I watched TV, I didn't crash. And then when you do go to sleep, your natural circadian rhythms kick in. Sleep for six to eight hours like you're supposed to. Wake up for the other 16 or 18 hours, whatever it is. And so you, it, you don't mess it up because now your body's working normally. So much less expensive, better for you. Now if you make a salad, 
and you put vinegar in it, you want to put it in plastic or glass? Glass. glass. There you go. Because plastic, when you put acid in, a gla in plastic, will dissolve the plastic. And a chemical is released called xenoestrogens. X-E-N-O estrogen. Xeno meaning foreign. It's a foreign estrogen-like compound 300 times stronger than human estrogen. <clears throat> estrogen is the hormone that makes you lay down fat, makes you emotional. It's okay. We need, we, all of us have both. But when you're estrogen dominant, your body lays down fat. Fat produces estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat, which produces estrogen. And this is one of the reasons it's hard for women to lose weight because they're estrogen dominant. And so what we need to do is stop that estrogen dominance, and you can stop that by stop using plastic. Never microwave in a plastic. Never microwave. But if you do, don't. But if you do, don't. <laughs> but if you still do, I'm begging you, please, no plastic in a microwave. I was at the radio station a couple weeks ago, and a very dear friend of mine, she came up, and um, she had some pasta, and uh, she could afford to lose a few. And uh, she had, if you don't know her name, I can say it. Maybe it's a him, maybe I'm lying. Ladies, no man's ever lied to you, right? Never. So, so she went with her pasta, macaroni as we call it in Italian, and she was heading for the microwave, and I said, please don't do that. And she said, why? I said, because I like you. <laughs> she didn't understand it. So I explained it to her. She says, so what should I do? I said, eat it cold. If you're going to eat it, you shouldn't be doing it anyway, because it's pure sugar but she ate a cold, okay? But when you microwave things, that even putting plastic on top of it, you're releasing these xenoestrogens, which messes up your hormones. Not a good thing. Okay. And that goes for uh, if you're gonna drink tea or coffee, not styrofoam cups. Take home stuff in styrofoam, you scrape it off, and those cold Chinese noodles and everything, getting all those hormones into your body, not a good idea, okay? Now, because, remember, we store things or pass them out or utilize them. If you're laying down fat, fat is where we store the toxins. So if you're fat, you're not fat, you're toxic. It's just that simple. And so what do you do? Detoxify, which is what this lecture is all about. Now, the bowels have to move two to three times a day. And the one thing that makes them move is fiber. Oh, if you do the master cleanse, by the way, there, there are some recommendations, too, about drinking a tea to keep everything moving because there's no fiber in it. So obviously what you're doing is lemon juice and water and, and cayenne pepper and, and maple syrup. So you want to do a special tea, it's a cleansing tea, and it'll get the bowels moving for you as well. Now it's not good to do that long term, but during this fast, it's a good idea. Fiber is the thing that bulks up in your colon. Now your muscles have stretch receptors in them. My muscle can stretch so far and then it springs back. So my colon has stretch receptors in it. And as my colon fills up, the stretch receptors say, that's it, and then they contract. And that creates a motion called peristalsis. That's a big fancy word. Yeah. Peristalsis is a wave moving down your colon, making everything move along. Fiber bulks up your colon, so we kick in those stretch receptors to cause it to contract. If you're eating a diet high in meats, dairy products, zero fiber. Eggs, zero fiber. So it kind of sits in your colon and it rots. And that's when you start having a lot of health issues. So the fiber is necessary. So eating the vegetables is going to give you vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, and it's going to give you that vital fiber. You can only get fiber from plants. Nowhere else can you get fiber except from plants. So you should eat more plants. And then everything's going to bulk up and start working again. Now if that doesn't work for you, then we have to look at some other things. Do you have a pinched nerve in the spine? Because the nerves control everything. Many times you have a pinched nerve in the low back, it controls the colon, the sex organs, and the bladder. So patients come to me and say, Doc, I hurt my back, you know, gosh, 20 years ago playing football, soccer, whatever it was. Any other problems? Oh, I've got gas bloating, diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, and okay, this nerve controls this. Now it makes sense. I've had a lot of diabetics, type 2 diabetics, that happens after a hyperextension injury where their back was stretched and they pinched the nerve in the mid-back, that's the nerve of the pancreas. <coughs> so this is a different way of looking at health. When you understand that the nerves control the organs, many times we try to treat the organ, but it's not the organ, it's the nerve to the organ. Following? That's a whole new way of looking at health. Yes, treat the organ if you have to, but always check the nerve supply to the organ as well. Because that's the key, that's the secret, that's the missing link to healthcare. And when you add that component into your healthcare, the physical aspects of health, now you actually have a plan. Okay? 
So Lori made your risotto tonight. What an odd thing to make. Why do, why do we add that into a dinner like this, a lecture like this? Because I want to show you, was it good? Yeah. Spectacular, right? I want you to see that there's food out there that you can eat that isn't the standard meat and potatoes. This is rice, fiber, asparagus, fiber, mushrooms, fiber. Following? So something like this is going to be very bulky. It's going to fill up in your gut. It's going to cause the bowel to contract. It's good for you. A lot of other ingredients in that are good for you. Garlic is antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. Onions are high in quercetin. Quercetin is a uh, natural antihistamine. It brings out inflammation with sinuses. And so instead of having... meal and it's also gluten free. Now why is it gluten free? What is this gluten stuff everybody's talking about? Are you sick of it by now? Gosh, it's gluten free. I'm gluten free. <laughs> gluten is a protein and it, the gluten we're talking about is found in wheat, barley, and rye. Now the rice you ate had gluten in it, but it's not the gluten that's bad. That's rice gluten. This is the gluten that is wheat, barley, and rye. Gluten it contains gliadin and glutenin. Gliadin is a protein. When it gets in your body, your body doesn't know what it is. Your body's never seen it before. It's a new protein, new to humans. So your immune system looks at that and says, I don't know what that is, I'm going to attack it. And so it attacks it and can cause an inflammatory reaction in your digestive system. When the bowel is inflamed, they can't absorb nutrients and pass out waste products properly. That inflammation can become systemic. It can go into your sinuses, into your brain, it can affect your mood swings. Really serious stuff. And when you eat gliadin, it makes you hungry. So then you want to eat more. And when you eat sugars, like breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, it stimulates the pleasure centers in your brain, called the dopamine receptor sites. Now, the dopamine receptor sites are kicked in. You're getting high on this stuff. You're liking it. And gliadin saying, oh, baby, I'm going to stimulate some more dopamine receptor sites, and you want to eat more. So that's why people that eat gluten oftentimes gain weight. They have an emotional component because of the inflammation in the brain, and they can't absorb the nutrients properly. So Laura gave you a little dessert here, and it's a vanilla pudding with some wafers. Again, gluten-free. So if you have to have a sweet, you shouldn't. But if you have to have a sweet, this is something that isn't going to so much stimulate the dopamine receptor site. The sugar will, but not like sugar with gluten in it. Yes? And Dr. Joe, we use coconut milk, and we put in lemon and lemon zest. So the theme is lemon today. You'll notice the theme? So the coconut milk has something called medium chain fatty acids in it. Medium chain fatty acids help stimulate your immune system. So coconut milk, coconut oil is good for you, as opposed to other oils like uh, corn oil is bad for you. And in fact, you probably should even consider eating coconut oil every day. And I'll give you a little trick. Fun, now the summer's here. Want to make ice cream? Take some frozen bananas, they become the creamy base, add some frozen fruit and some coconut milk, Whip it into an ice cream. Pour some coconut milk into it, and the coconut milk becomes these little crunchies. Coconut, uh, uh, coconut oil, I'm sorry. The coconut oil becomes little crunchies. Remember when you were a kid, they had this dip cones, they'd dip it in the red or the black, and it would harden instantly? You know what that was? Coconut oil. Yeah. It's flavored coconut oil. And it hardens as soon as it hits something cold. What is it, 76 degrees, I think it is. Coconut, become, coconut oil is hard at 70, 70, uh, 76 and liquid at 77 or something like that. It's right, right around that area. That's why in the summer, you know, there's coconut oil is liquid, in the winter, it's, it's solid. That's okay. It's a mystery, right? It's like, what happened to my oil? It went bad. It didn't go bad, it just temperature dropped. So. But that's a fun little way to get the coconut oil into your system. And that oil is, is essential for every cell in the body, and that's why coconut oil is so cool. Now, I want to cover a few more things, then I'll open up the questions. The one thing that I see all day, every day in my practice is something which will eventually become a hiatal hernia. We talk about your stomach sitting here. There's a sheet of muscle called the diaphragm here. You eat food, it goes through the diaphragm, into the stomach, stomach digests food, passes it into the small intestine, pancreas kicks in, you go through that whole process. But what happens is in probably 85% of my patients, the stomach is pushing up against the diaphragm. When the stomach pushes up against the diaphragm, the stomach is now not digesting food properly because it's all spazzed out. It's supposed to be loose and you're supposed to put some food in it and mixes it with the digestive enzymes and the acids and then dumps it into the small intestine. But if that stomach is spasmed, it can't break the food down properly. 
So the food sits in the stomach for too long and it rots. And then if you get the acid reflux, what's coming up, a lot of it isn't all stomach acid. It's lactic acid. Lactic acid happens when food rots in your stomach. Why does it rot? It sat there too long. So I have to go into my patients, and all my doctors are trained by me to do this. We take the stomach and we massage it. We pull it down away from the diaphragm. And when we do that, many times the stomach flattens out, the gas, the bloating, the bad breath goes away, and the bowel starts to return to normal function. Because bowel function is what we call a sympathetic function. A parasympathetic, I'm sorry. There's two types of nerves in your body. Sympathetics speed you up. Parasympathetics slow you down. Parasympathetics need to be kicked in. Digestion, romance, going to the bathroom, sleep. That's parasympathetic. This is sympathetic. You're paying attention, I'm talking, you're sweating. <laughs> Those are sympathetic functions. So you want to go into that parasympathetic mode in order to go to sleep. And so many times you're not in that parasympathetic mode because you're not shifting gears. And by pulling the stomach away from the diaphragm, you kind of shift the body into the parasympathetic mode. And then the bowels start to work again and detoxification occurs. Pretty nifty. And that's a physical way to kick into parasympathetics. Lowers your blood pressure, helps you relax, lowers your pulse, parasympathetic function. Pretty nifty, huh? So if you're having acid reflux, gas, bloating, diarrhea, uh, belching, uh, the, the, the stomach sticking out, distension, those are signs you're not digesting your food properly. And you need to fix it. And it's not a hard fix. Throw out the least. So you gotta get the nervous system working properly. You have to make sure the brain is sending messages along the nerves to the organs. You gotta make sure that the organs are lined up properly. You gotta make sure you're putting the right food in the body. And you gotta make sure the body's eliminating those toxins. And the last thing I'll mention before uh, going to questions is water. Water is vital. Now, if you remember having babies, they were always thirsty. I want to drink, I want to drink, I want to drink, I want to drink. Constantly. You never went out of the house without sippy cups and water bottles and everything, right? When a baby becomes a toddler, there's a part of the brain that controls hunger and there's a part of the brain that controls thirst. These two parts of the brain grow together as the child matures. And we as adults now have a real tough time distinguishing between hunger and thirst. I talked about on my show last week that antihistamines make you thirsty. They dry your mouth out. So if you have trouble distinguishing between hunger and thirst, you may be thirsty, but you think I'm hungry, you start eating. And that's how you gain weight. So water is the secret to losing weight because most of the time when you're hungry, you're not hungry, you're thirsty. Making sense? So that's what we have. Okay, so you have to have normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, good nutrition. It's not hard. It's pretty easy. Okay? Your turn. Questions? I'll try not to keep you here for more than an hour or so. Yes? How much uh, coconut oil should you put in your mouth to slosh around? Uh, this oil pulling, you mean? Hmm? Oh, you talk about when I talk about oil pulling? Well, you talk about uh, you for using it as a garbage. Oh, yeah. Well, no, you can, eat the, you can eat about two tablespoons of coconut oil a day. There's something called oil pulling. And what you do is take about a teaspoon of oil. depends how much you can handle. Start with a teaspoon. Put it in your mouth and swish it around. Swish it around up to 20 minutes. Now, I can't do 20 minutes. <laughs> I do about five minutes. But it's wonderful because it gets in between your teeth and up into the crevices where nothing else can get. It's antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. So it's amazing for gum disease, toothaches, fascinating how well it works. And it really is a great way to detoxify and pull junk out of your body. So for, you what? Up to 20 minutes. Just a teaspoon? About a teaspoon. As much as you can handle, but a teaspoon is, let's start there. Now you can also use sesame oil if you want to, to make sure they're organic. Um, but it's amazing to pull and detox stuff out of the body. It's crazy how good it is and how quick and easy it is and cheap. And then spit the oil out and swallow it, of course. Okay. Yes? That uh, counteract uh, dry mouth? Can it counteract dry mouth, yes. Okay. Every cell in your body has a layer around of fats and proteins, and you want to have good, healthy fat around your cells. And that helps tremendously with, with lubrication. Yes? Does it matter if it's unrefined? You want to have unrefined organic oils, yes. Okay, sesame or coconut. Yes? Do you do this every day? If you do it every day, you'll be amazed how good you feel. Do I do it every day? No. Should I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Well, my friend who comes to see you could come tonight, but she has terrible car sickness. Mm -hmm. And she, when she drives, she gets car sick. Right. What do you recommend for that? When you get car sick, oftentimes it's a problem with the inner ear. 
Yes. Could be the cerebellum too. The cerebellum and the inner ear kind of control balance. So with some people, well, what I do is I check uh, their brain, I check their cerebellum, and I check their ears to see if there's an issue. Now I didn't have car, I didn't have seasickness until I was hit by a car when I was a little kid. After I got hit by the car, I landed with my head cocked over, and since then I've had uh, car sickness, or seasickness actually. Um, and something happened to my brain, and we've tried fixing it. it explains a lot, right? And, uh, <laughs> we tried fixing it, and uh, I still have that. So something went wrong in my body, so I don't balance right. Yeah. So well, so, uh, I fixed a lot of other people. I just can't fix myself. That's the problem. <laughs> is that physical, or is there something that? It's you probably eat? physical. It's probably physical, irritating the nerves that create the balance in the body. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I have two questions. My first question is, as I want to practice becoming a vegan, however, I am trying to bulk up to basically be more, have more muscle mass. Uh -huh. Right. So, what kind of vegetables or food that I can take in sure. that will still build muscle? Because of course, they always say eat meat. Meat, meat, meat. She wants to build muscle mass, and she wants to be a vegan. That's it. Now she's in a quandary. Bill Pearl, six-time Mr. Universe, vegetarian. Dave Scott. Four-time winner of the Ironman Triathlon, don't quote me on that one. Vegetarian. A lot of football players. Gorillas. Gorillas. You know how big and strong they are. Okay, yeah, right. Um, your body only needs about 8 to 10% of its total caloric intake is protein. A carrot is 6%. So look at a cow. Look how big a cow is. If they're eating grass, I mean, they have milk. They get milk every day. They got leather. They got meat. Where are they getting their muscles from? Gorillas. Where are they getting their muscles from? The plant proteins are, I feel, better than the animal proteins. Because when you eat a steak, which is about 17% protein, what happens to that other protein? It has to be wasted. It has to go through the liver. It has to go through the kidneys. It's a major stress on the detoxification system. So there's nothing wrong with being plant-based and having good muscles. Okay. And okay? my second question is, what is the strongest vegetable or meat or anything for constipation? Well, something like prunes well, well, has an acid in it that irritates the bowels. That's not really a fiber. Okay. But what I would suggest then is take chia seeds, hemp seeds, not the kind from college, <laughs> <laughs> and flax seeds, and or, combination thereof. Grind them up. Make sure you grind them. Eat them. Eat three, four tablespoons a day. You know, what I do with that is I'll uh, add some raisins to it and some coconut milk, but eat it quickly because it gets slimy otherwise. And eat that, whew, that'll clean you right up. So hemp and or chia and or flax. And that is amazing for getting everything working again. Thank you so yes. much. Um, how do you feel about like, no replacement shakes, like take all meat or like, the raw milk? Raw milk is great. Uh, it's illegal to buy in Georgia for human consumption. You can buy it for your pets, but you can't buy it for you. <laughs> now you can buy it for, for cheese, but you can't buy it for milk. I'm talking about the replacement shakes, like the raw milk, like replacement, like no replacement. Oh, meal replacement shakes. Yeah, they have like. The they have to be raw and they have to be cold processed. Because as soon as you heat something, you're changing yeah. the molecular structure. It's like whey protein, for example, that comes from cow's milk. If you're going to do whey protein, it's got to be raw. And it's got to be cold processed. As soon as it's heated, now it's bad for you. Yeah. Okay. I haven't had any animal products in 30 years, so personally, I don't see any need for it. Okay. Okay. And my brain seems to work okay so far. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Uh, oh, last one. Go ahead. Go back there. What? Uh, I need to do to compensate for not having a gallbladder. What do you do to compensate for not having gallbladder? Make sure you're eating easily digested fats, which are plant-based fats. Coconut oil, olive oil, um, avocados, nuts. When you start getting into the harder to digest animal-based fats, the body can't digest it because you don't have that storehouse to squirt all that bile to break it all down. And so you want to spread out your oils throughout the day too. Don't take them all at once. Okay? Yes. If you get in a hurry and <clears throat> don't have time to prepare the vegetables, can digestive enzyme supplements help? Digestive enzyme supplements can help, yes, absolutely. In fact, the two supplements I take every single day are called Dr. You've heard me talk about on radio. Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're raw, mostly raw. They have the active enzymes in them. So I take Super Greens and Essential Source at least once a day. Many times, twice a day. Twice a day if I have a big day, if I've got a... I don't know, I got a lecture. Okay, I had some before I came here. I've got a radio show. I got a date. I'm going out partying with my friends. I'm going to take my super greens, my essential source, more than once to get all those nutrients and enzymes in there. So the answer is yes. Yes. Is it okay to take um, supplements during a cleanse? Take a couple of what? Supplements during a cleanse. Oh, supplements during a cleanse. Yes, you can do it. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Two questions. 
What did you say the chia seeds you do every day? Fiber. Three to, three to four yeah. tablespoons with what? Uh, about, we start out with two tablespoons. And, and I just it? add it with coconut milk. Oh, coconut. And then I'll add some raisins too because it makes it a little sweeter. Okay. And I'll eat that as a cereal almost. Okay. okay? So and that lactose first? Coconut, yes. Lactose only comes from cows. Yeah. Or people. And, and I to get that people milk. Master cleanse. Yes. Um, how often do you drink that? You can do it anywhere from six days up till probably 15 days. But is that for like one serving? Like the, that's All day, every day. That's all you drink. Oh, so you can have as much as, much as you want. As you need. Gallons. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of that um, movement? Um, during the spine? The sacral occipital pump? There you go. And then also, um, there's, and I won't name her specifically, but um, she got to a point where she ate too much raw food. She didn't have a menstrual cycle anymore. Is that. Yeah, if you go so far raw food, uh, it, it, well, the menstrual cycle is a way to detoxify. Yeah. So one theory behind that is your body doesn't have a lot of toxins in it, you don't have to detoxify it. You'll have some menstrual cycle. Traditionally, yeah. something, if they have flow, is much, much less. As soon as women start getting on a plant-based diet, their flow drops dramatically. Yeah. Once they go to a more raw diet, their flow drops dramatically again. Yeah, I noticed that one actually. Yeah, well, you did. You saw the change, right? Yeah, yeah it really does work. Yeah. <laughs> yes? How often to do the master plan just for good How often for maintenance? Twice a year is good. Okay? Would that master plan. <coughs> We're making fertile. No, you're still having a menstrual cycle, but it's so, so much smaller than it was. You're still ovulating. Yeah. Yes, it was What causes UTIs? Urinary tract infections, UTIs. Usually what happens is with women, the urethra is very short. From the bladder to the, to the outside world is very short. With men, the urethra is a lot longer. So the infection could come from the outside in. <coughs> no perfect. And, and it could come from uh, the bacteria in your body being imbalanced, and that's a very common cause. So if you're eating a lot of meats and dairy products and not getting the good bacteria in, you've got to change that. And always, 100% of the time, you've got to adjust the low back. That's the nerve into the bladder. Okay, okay with respect to the candida plants, does it at some point trigger the body to go into like starvation mode? The uh, master cleanse, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't go to starvation mode. You give me the, uh, the uh, um, maple syrup. And then the maple syrup, that's too much sugar and kicks you into candida. It's a, no, it's not, it shouldn't kick into candida because you, it's a little bit of sugar with the minerals. And the candida is not going to feast on that. <coughs> it's going to feast on things like pastas and breads and cookies and cakes. So that little bit is not going to make a difference. You did what? I did it for 21 days and I got the candida. Oh, you got the candida after that. Okay, well then that, that was a, you, your candida was probably so intense we probably knocked out the candida first then before we went into the master class. We don't know that until you're in, into it though. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, manipulating the stomach, can that relieve uh, heartburn? And that will relieve heartburn, reflux by definition, yeah. And reflux. Reflux, the heartburn, all of that, that's coming from the stomach up against the diaphragm. My last question with the lemons, you know, I'm trying to think, can I just drink the lemons with some cayenne peppers? Every day in the morning before I get started, will it mess up my enamel on my teeth? Uh, yes, you should do it every single day and then rinse your mouth out with some water in it. You're, you're okay, so it won't, okay. So yeah, okay, yeah. So it still is an acid until it's broken down. Is it mandatory that you use the maple syrup for the master cleanse? The master cleanse, it works well with the maple syrup because it gives you the minerals. Yeah, so. This is the super greens I was telling you about. Wheatgrass, body grass, alfalfa grass. It is gluten free. Huh. <laughs> Someone questioned me. <laughs> because uh, gluten only forms when the berries form. The grass itself doesn't have gluten in it. Okay? So this alkalizes the system. It's wonderful. It gives you tons of minerals. It has uh, chlorella and spirulina, which is the, great, the best source of omega-3 fatty acids in the world. It has DALTS, which is iodine for your thyroid. We all need iodine. Most of us are deficient. And then the essential source is fruits and vegetables in a powder form. One scoop is about 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables. Then we have prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin. So these two are like gold. We ran out of this, if you knew that a couple of weeks ago, and the riots we had in my office, <laughs> the death threats we got. <laughs> I mean, this stuff is amazing. We ran out, nobody was happy, including me. Okay, we just got a new shipment. So we're good. Okay, this is an intestinal cleanser. If the bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, you can take this. This is not forever. This is, I want you to take this, because this is great for everybody all the time. This, I want to kind of jumpstart the bowels and get it moving again, and then you can come off this. For 20 bucks, I think you get 100 capsules. I mean, it's a really inexpensive way to get the bowels cleansing. So it's a great way to keep the bowels moving. Okay? More, yes? Oh, the master cleanse, could you use the super greens instead of yes. the maple syrup? Yes, you could use the super greens yeah. instead of the maple syrup, probably. I've never thought about it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. 
on, yes. on the super greens, one of the uh, highest listed ingredients is a spirulina, yeah. organic spirulina, but yet it doesn't list any values for omega 3s. The reason is when you use pure foods, whole foods, you can't list it unless it's exact. Okay. So if I have a synthetic vitamin C, I know 100 milligrams is 100 milligrams. When I have pure vitamin C, I have to titrate it and filter it out to measure it. When you use whole food supplements, I don't know. Because the spirulina from here is different than the spirulina from here, and it has to be right or you can't list it. That's why we don't list it in a whole food supplement. Great question. Yes? You say you use that every morning? Every morning. That, that just it, just in the morning, right? Oh, you can do it any time. Like I said, you can take it any time of the day you want. I just take it in the morning because I, I, I'm forgetful. I'm old and I forget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir? I just read something on the internet about iodine. They say we can deficient. Most people are deficient in iodine, yes. How, how do you know that? Well, you can do a salivary test. You can do an iodine loading test, which really is the best way to do it. We give you a certain amount of iodine, and if you want, I can, have, I can order the test for you. And you take a certain amount of iodine, a large amount, and then we collect your urine. I think it's 24 hours. And then we measure how much iodine is in your urine. If most of what you put, took in comes out, you're fine. You have plenty of iodine. If not a lot comes out, you're absorbing that iodine. That means you're iodine deficient. Okay? Yes? Well, limes work in a pinch. Yes, limes work in a pinch, yes. Okay. okay. What is your radio station? What? WSB, the largest radio station in the world. I'm on 5 o'clock Sunday mornings. And I'm also on from 7 to 9 Sunday nights. 5 o'clock is me just talking for an hour, can't get through. 7 to 9 is, is a call-in show. Now, I, I, I spoke to my webmaster. I think we have all our shows now back on the website again, archived. So you can go to my website. We have all those shows there. You can listen to them anytime, 24 hours a day. It's free. So. What about this program? This, we're taping this. We'll probably put it on YouTube, won't we, Sharon? Sharon says it'll be on YouTube. When will it be on YouTube, Sharon? This week. This week, Sharon says. So if it's not there... <laughs> What about alkaline water? Alkaline water is a good idea, but the problem is you shouldn't need alkaline water. You should have an alkaline lifestyle. Alkaline water alkalizes the system, but if you have an alkaline system, you don't need alkaline water. So it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, right. But I'd rather go beyond that. that. I feel that's just a piece of the puzzle. Okay, sir? You should suggest some healthy snacks. Healthy snacks, sure. Uh, well, raw vegetables is always great. Okay, uh, if you like things cooked, uh, you can do popcorn, make sure it's organic. If it's not organic, 92% of all corn in this country is genetically modified. I don't have time to give you that lecture tonight. Okay, <laughs> it's another hour on GMOs. Um, you can use coconut oil to pop it in, because coconut oil has a high smoke point, so it's, it's more stable, it's more heat stable, um, and it's awesome. And add some nutritional yeast to it. Nutritional yeast loaded with B vitamins. I love, I take nutritional yeast every single day. Um, and that's a great snack. Um, like I said, fruits and veggies are great. You only want to do about three pieces of fruit a day, though. More than three pieces of fruit a day uh, gives you too much fructose. That goes into your liver, can clog up your liver, create uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide production, can't get the blood supply. Follow on that? <laughs> also, Brazil nuts are great. They're high in selenium and zinc. Okay, we need a lot of selenium and zinc in our diet, so Brazil nuts are off the chart great. And a little trick that I found out by accident, I started taking selenium and uh, my hair got darker. And thicker. And even a little 10 year old kid said, You dyeing your hair? And I said, No, I'm really not. And the only thing I did differently was selenium. So if you do three or four Brazil nuts a day, you're going to get a lot of selenium. So. And a friend of mine was totally gray, and now he's salt and pepper after like three months. So. I read that if you eat more than three Brazil nuts, it's too much selenium. No, you're not going to get too much. You'll be fine with that. I mean, you have to eat handfuls of it. What? How many can you? I would say I would need a handful or two, but you'd have to eat a lot more than a handful or two to get any toxicity. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. The question is, can you be too active? And the answer is yes. The good news is you're young and you're producing a lot of uh, free uh, the free radicals are being produced and you're producing antioxidants to fight off the free radicals. Free radicals like Pac-Man, they eat through things. As you get older, it will start wearing away at your skin, your joints, it really will. Yeah. Is there anything that I should, like, because I mean, I'm, I, my personality, my, how I am, I like, seems 
No, it, that'll change, trust me. Will it? Because I'm just going to play. Old folks, can we vouch for that? Okay. <laughs> All the hands go up. Yeah. That will change, I promise. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have a question about numbness on the side of your foot. Yes. I went to a podiatrist and they did an x ray. They saw a, they thought it was a piece of a small needle broke in there. Right. But he said he doesn't think it was that because I can walk on it and there's no pain. No pain, right. Numbness is most likely in the legs or feet coming from the low back. Nerves in the low back control the back, hips, legs, knees, and ankles. Back pain, leg pain, hip pain, numbness, tingling, cold feet. Again, that nerve controls the colon, sex organs, and bladder as well. So when you have numbness, tingling, weakness, I've, in 30 years of doing this, I've never seen it not be a pinched nerve in the spine. And that's why it's so important you get your spine checked. 10% of the nerves feel pain, 90% of the nerves don't feel pain. So you can have a pinched nerve and not know it. Now think about this. What diseases kill us? The ones that don't hurt. High blood pressure, diabetes, cancer in its early stages don't hurt. Because 90% of the time there is no pain, but there's malfunction. So in my office, when a patient comes in, I check the nerves that feel pain, but we go beyond that. We check the nerves that don't feel pain, the 90%. Then we check the stomach if we have to, to make sure it's working properly. So when a patient comes in my office, we put together a protocol, not just, hey, let's, let's fix your sore neck. I want to get you better not just out of pain. Some people just want to get out of pain. That's okay. It's their call. But eventually they come back in and I take another x-ray and they go, oh my gosh, my neck is more deteriorated. I said, yeah, I told you it was going to be. And they're always shocked. 100% of the time, it really is. I said, yeah, I didn't lie. No reason to lie to you. So that's why that, that is a symptom, not the cause. The symptom is the numbness. The cause is probably the pinched nerve in the back. I've listened to a lot. You get this in the book form, but I can... Not yet. I'm getting my next book edited. Okay. I hope. My last editor got stupid. So I had to get a new editor. So hopefully it'll be edited soon and it'll be out and most of this will be in there. Yeah. Do you have uh, something natural instead of meclizine for car sickness? For what? Uh, car sickness. Something. Oh, for car sickness. Ginger. Ginger. Ginger is awesome. awesome. What do you do is take some uh, organic ginger, wash it, throw it in a food processor, cover about one third with organic lemon juice, puree it. Puree it for a while. You've got to break down the strings in there. And what I do is I pour it in an ice cube tray. And then I pop it out and have it in a bag, so when I want a uh, ginger ice cube, I just take out a ginger ice cube and take it that way. This way you don't have to have ginger on hand all the time, because that's not something you have in your house all the time. But in the freezer, you do. Yeah, yes? I have a son that loves bread, and mm -hmm. I know that's a, a no-no in yes. the process. Yes. So which is better, organic wheat or gluten-free? Gluten-free. Gluten-free organic is the best. Gluten-free organic is the best. Gluten-free organic. Yeah. Do you like the Nutribullet? With oh, the I love it. You do? Love my Nutribullet. Uh, Vitamix, Vitamix for bigger projects, Nutribullet for little projects. Yeah, love it. All right, a few more questions. Go ahead. Um, I just want to know if you could recommend some snacks for toddlers. Snacks for toddlers? All day. Okay, avocados are awesome. Avocados. Uh, put out, and they can eat a little more fruit than us. They can process more sugar than us old folks. Okay. So put out food. Um, I know if I... What if I have a kid around and I'll, I'll just lay out a plate of avocados and cucumbers and sliced peppers and I'll just put it there. They'll eat it. I promise. Okay? Because <laughs> they will. That's just how they are. If there's fruit out, they'll eat it. So it's ever around, they're going to eat. And if you have the bad stuff in the house, guess what? They're going to eat it. Okay? And you're going to eat it. Because I'll eat it. Get out of the house. Yes, Anne. Anything you can eat to help break like hormones? Yeah, you, you want to you you stop putting the bad stuff in. So when it comes to hormone regulations, and I do a whole seminar on that, it's not just what you eat, it's what you don't eat. Stay away from the meats and the dairies and the coffees and the sodas. Nothing has more synthetic pesticides than coffee. Coffee's number one. So if you're going to drink coffee, drink organic or don't drink coffee, which is even better. Okay? But a lot of water, getting the fiber in the system to work normally. And then when you get the good fats, the good fats are the key here. But the way hormones are made, your adrenal glands produce something called pregnenolone. Pregnenolone comes from cholesterol, good cholesterol. Cholesterol produces pregnenolone. Pregnenolone produces DHEA. DHEA produces your hormones. So you've got to get the adrenal glands working to get the hormones working because that's where they're coming from. Good fats, and then if you have an adrenal insufficiency, and I can test that, it takes 10 seconds to test, then you probably want to get on some adrenal supplements, and that'll help balance out the hormones. Not the hormones themselves, but the precursors to the hormones, which is the adrenals. All right, two more questions. Go ahead. No more questions? No, all right, good. Okay. Yes, and then what I got to tell you something. What supplements would you recommend? I'm a vegetarian. I take Eleuthero, which used to be called Siberian ginseng. Um, if you're not a vegetarian, I've got some really good adrenal supplements I can recommend. I have them at my office. Okay? Oh, yes. Nice question. Go ahead. Well, all the hint, you said that all the uh, chi, flexing, all that 
put, I end up taking too much that can hurt my Yeah, you know, that's why you don't want to do too much, yeah, because so, it can really blow up in there, yeah. So a tablespoon of... A tablespoon or two, start with that if you want to add a little bit, a tablespoon every day, a couple of days more, and then see what's comfortable for you. Can I put all three? Mix up all three? Sure. And you said if I have too much, meaning explosive like diarrhea Explosive or... diarrhea, cramping, bloating, gas, oh. yeah, then you just got to come back a little bit. Okay. Okay, okay yeah, all right. One more question. Here. Yes, all these products are here, the intestinal cleanser. Uh, this is my first book, it's called Eating Right for the Health of It. Look, that's me with hair. <laughs> uh, Sharon has promised me she's going to make me get a new picture. Okay, because this is the first half of the book tells you how to change your diet. Everybody says, I don't know what to eat, I don't know what to eat. Here's your guide. First half of the book tells you how to change your diet. The second half of the book, including the recipes you had today, uh, the risottos in here, are all recipes. And you'll notice I'm not stopping at any page. It's quick, it's easy, it's cheap. You come to my house, this is what I'm making for you, something out of the book, okay? So everybody should get about five copies of these, I think, maybe 10. Um, I will tell you, um, an autograph copy sell for to $85 on eBay. Watch it. <laughs> I'll sign it for you tonight if you want. And the books and the supplements are all here. Now, one, a couple of presents before you leave, because girls like what? Presents. presents. There you go. Hey. <laughs> She was not cute for that. <laughs> not if they... <laughs> uh, we got some samples of some things back there. We got some coupons back there. Uh, before you leave, if you go shopping tonight, I think you should, everybody gets 10% off their entire purchase. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is, okay? That's my present to you. And then one last present that I hope you take me up on. If you'd like to come see me in my office, we're about three minutes from here. My team of doctors and I, we're about three minutes from here. If you want to come see me, I'll check your nervous system. I'll check your digestive system. If we need to we'll talk about food, that you on the second or third visit, because I want to get the digestive system and nervous system first. If you want to come see us, I'm more than happy to have you come see us. However, you know the rules, right? If you listen to me on radio. And I'm serious, folks. Don't mess with me. <laughs> you make an appointment, you have to show up. For some reason, people at these lectures notoriously don't show up. Not you, the other people. <laughs> but don't make it a point if you're not, if you don't, if you're not going to show up. Please, I beg of you. We fill up very quickly. We don't have time to call you. Hey, Bob, where are you? Oh, I forgot. I'm stupid. And that, that you should be seeing me so I can fix your brain. <laughs> okay? And then number two, if you're not ready to get well, and I know this sounds like a stupid statement, maybe it's time, maybe it's distance, maybe it's finances. I may find something chiropractically needs to fix. Chiropractic is going to be more than one visit. I'll tell you that right now. Okay? It may be that we have to work on the stomach, work on your diet. If you're not ready to get well, please don't make an appointment. When you're ready, call me. We'll make you an appointment. We accept insurance. We file insurance. We file Medicare. We file um, most of the major medicals. I think there's only one we don't even file because it's, it costs us too much to file. We lose money every time we accept one of those patients. So we can't do this anymore. Uh, car accidents. If you've ever been in a car accident or a sports injury, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. <coughs> Could have been 50 years ago. The car was damaged, you were damaged, <coughs> you need to get it fixed. Because if you don't get it fixed, the only promise I can, I can't promise anything, but I can promise this, if you have a problem, you don't fix it, chances are it's going to get worse. And the biggest complaint I get from my patients, you hear this all the time on radio, why didn't I do this sooner? I hear that, not every day, probably every 15 minutes. Why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I do this sooner? How come I didn't come in sooner? I've been meaning to come to you for 10 years now, why didn't I come in sooner? I don't know. That's one question I can't answer. If you want to set up an appointment, Lori back there is going to set you up a time to come on in. Uh, you can make the appointment with Lori, and you know the rules. I'll come after you. Okay. If you want to get your coupons, uh, Sharon, do you have the discount coupons for everybody? Yes, Okay. And I'll be hanging around answering any questions. Uh, thanks, guys. You did great tonight. Thanks.